the show, I wanted to take a look at some of the cool season vegetables growing in our garden that are sort of at the end of their harvest period. It's just about to get too hot to where we're going to have to pull these up and compost them. But uh, we can still get a little bit more harvest from some of these plants. And we'll start out here with this bull's blood beet. Now, the last time we showed you this little planting, these were just little itty bitty seedlings and we were thinning them out. But we've harvested several of the beets from this little sowing. But you can see that beautiful reddish color on these beets. They have a good deal of red or that purplish red pigment up in the foliage as well. And then if we look at the beet root down here, still tender enough to, uh, to be served and, and eaten or, uh, or uh, canned or, or something like that. But uh, lots of uh, that pigment in there that's so delicious and so good for us as well. The beets called bull's blood growing well here in the garden, very attractive in that raised bed. Well, right down here we have another attractive cool season plant. This is a kale. This is blue curled scotch kale. It's sometimes known as Vates dwarf kale, and it is a dwarf scotch kale. And I just love that frilliness of those leaves. That kind of bluish green color adds a lot so we could def definitely decorate some dishes with this on the table. It makes a great decoration for the garden as well. This plant was developed in Virginia at their university's agricultural research station back in 1950. But a uh, beautiful plant, and one of the things I like about it is that there's not a lot of insect damage. You don't have a lot of those uh, worm holes in the leaves, and even if we did, we may not even see them because of that, that beautiful frilliness on this blue dwarf scotch kale. We always have carrots in our garden here at uh, our Oklahoma Gardening Studio Garden. And the one we grew this year is a rather unique carrot in that it's a purple carrot. This one is called dragon carrot. And it's got that beautiful purple color. And on the inside, they are orange, kind of an orangish, a little bit of maybe yellow in there, but that uh, beautiful purple skin. You could do some really fun things with these and salads or serving them fresh to uh, utilize that, that beautiful color. Now, once these are cooked, that purple color will disappear. The purple carrot today seems very unique, but at one time, most of the carrots that were available were either red, white, yellow or some other color, maybe even purple, but not orange. It wasn't until the 17th century and some uh, carrot breeders in Holland developed the orange carrots that we have today. But uh, just having a purple one these days is very unique to have in the garden and to make some really delicious salads and colorful colorful things in the on the table but a dragon carrot one that I think you'd like to try right over here we've got a very easy to grow cool season vegetable this is a Chinese cabbage and it's a variety called kaboko and just look at the size of the heads of this Chinese cabbage I'm gonna cut one of these at the base down here a Chinese cabbage is one of the easier to grow cool season vegetables and they come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Some of the uh, Chinese cabbages have long, tall, pointed heads. We have some Chinese cabbage that have little round, squatty heads. Some of the Chinese cabbage don't make heads at all. But uh, this one, the Kaboko variety, has these huge heads. I mean, these are almost basketball size. And they're actually quite heavy as well. But uh, some gardeners will grow this as a substitute for head lettuce. But uh, again, just a, a huge head on this Chinese cabbage, and you can see you can break it apart. It's very tender, and some gardeners are calling this Kaboko variety one of the uh, more refined and better tasting, one of the mild, most mild flavored of the Chinese cabbage. Just look at those green and white leaves, and even at this stage, very tender and crisp, and uh, a great thing to grow in the garden. Now, we grew these from seed that we started 
in the greenhouse back in the spring, but they're also really easy to grow if we just direct seed those in the garden. And you can grow them in the springtime. You can also grow them in the fall garden. So now if you're interested in growing some of this Chinese cabbage in a fall garden, you can order the seed right now and keep those seed in the refrigerator. And then late August, early September, sow those out in your garden, have a great crop of these wonderful vegetables. Well, right down here, we've got another somewhat unique cool season crop that is a little bit harder to grow than the Chinese cabbage. We've got some cauliflower, and this is a very unique one. It's called a cheddar. And if you look right down here, we've just got one small cauliflower head being produced. But you can see why it's so unique. It's orange. The uh, cheddar the cauliflower has those, those orange heads that uh, have a lot of beta carotene. In fact, they have 25 times the beta carotene of the regular white cauliflower. And this year, 2006, hasn't been a really good year to grow cauliflower because we had those record warm temperatures in the uh, latter part of May that uh, while these heads were trying to develop and really we just didn't get a good production season for our cauliflower this year. Well, the orange cauliflower is certainly popular here in Stillwater and we've also got a black vegetable over here in this part of the garden and these have kind of gone to to seed a little bit. They're a little bit past their prime, but we can still harvest one of these. It's a radish and it's black. This is the round black radish. And you see that beautiful black skin. And even though the plants are quite large for a radish, these are actually not harvested until they're about four inches in diameter. Now with the warm weather, they've already bolted and flowered and they're setting fruit, but um, Normally, you do let them get quite large. Now, this isn't one of the radishes that you would have in salads or uh, to be eaten fresh or anything like that. They're more of a, a cooking radish. They have a little bit of a pungent flavor, but uh, that beautiful black skin, very unique, interesting radish. If you cut it open, you can see that the inside is white. With the round black, a Spanish black radish that we've grown this year. And out here on the, uh, the growing or the flowering tips, you can see that some of these plants have already flowered and they fruited as well. And the fruits are also edible. You might remember the uh, rat tail radish that we've grown here uh, in our gardens before. They make those, those fruits up at the top of the radish and they, they get quite long and look like the tail of a rat. Well, these are a little bit shorter on this round black radish, but uh, kind of the same thing. Um, kind of a spicy flavor to the fruit of the radish. Well, right over here across the pathway, we've got another cool season crop that, again, with warm temperatures in May, we didn't really get good production, but this is some broccoli. This is the Bell Star broccoli, a very pale green broccoli head is produced on the plant. And uh, got some little ones down here. They're not gonna be very well developed, again, because of the heat in May. And you can see we've got a little bit of insect damage, some caterpillars are feeding on the foliage of our broccoli. But the way we take care of those is with some Bacillus thuringiensis, a biological insecticide that uh, we sprinkle in the dust form on the plants. Now we've tried to spray in a liquid form the uh, Bacillus thuringiensis on some of our cool season crops, but they're so waxy whenever the water hits those leaves, you can see it kind of, it's kind of beating up even right here, some of the dew right there, but uh, they're just so waxy that the pesticides don't really give you good coverage and the caterpillars kind of have their way. So to get uh, better coverage, we just use the, uh, the dust form of the BT or the Bacillus thuringiensis. Right over here, we've got a different kind of tomato. This is a variegated tomato. You can see the variegation there, a little white in the foliage. We're going to try those and see how well those work, sort of a novelty for the garden. Now the uh, tomato fruit itself will not be variegated, but the uh, leaves are certainly attractive. 
Right down here, we've got a patch of lettuce, and you might remember earlier this year, we were planting our lettuce, and we were sprinkling some spinach into the planting. Well, you can see it's, it's uh, gone, gone away now. The uh, plants have bolted, they're flowering, the spinach is flowering as well. So it's really time to just pull this out and put it on the compost pile. Once these plants begin to flower, the flavor really goes downhill. So we're kind of done with our lettuce crop for this year. Right here, we tried something this spring that is pretty tough, pretty hard to do in Oklahoma in the springtime. We tried to grow Brussels sprouts. And Brussels sprouts are really just a, a cabbage on a stick, sort of a tall cabbage. Got a little weed coming up right there. We'll get rid of that. But you can see that we just really weren't able to get any to develop at all. This is a false stuff variety of Brussels sprout, so it's kind of purplish red, so it's, it's very attractive, but uh, hard to do on a normal year in Oklahoma, much less in one with a really warm May like we had this year. Most people that have success with Brussels sprouts in Oklahoma have success from a crop that they sow for a fall crop and usually have those Brussels sprouts coming on and being ready to harvest around Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving time. So we will try this variety of Brussels sprouts again for a fall crop. Well, the last plant down here I want to show you of these, these cool season crops for this year is one of the red cabbages. And I really like this one. It's called sombrero. It's got those big leaves and it's just a beautiful, almost iridescent blue purple. And this beautiful sombrero red cabbage.